So we continue our series breaking down the state of each and every franchise. Today, we look at the San Diego Padres. What's going on, baseball fans? Jeremy Laracuente here for the Baseball Banter Broadcast. And as I said in the open, we will be discussing the state of the San Diego Padres. Now, when looking at the Padres franchise, we have to start with the biggest news and note about this team. Fernando Tatis Jr. is set to miss some time at the beginning of the season due to a fractured left wrist caused by one or several motorcycle accidents in the offseason. I think that when you look at what this Padres team was going to be capable of doing in the 2022 campaign, it was really going to go based off of how Fernando went. We have seen Fernando kind of go through these different injuries since coming up to the major leagues, but there's an opportunity that if he can get back, which we've seen him come back in a much shorter time frame than was expected previously, if he can do that again, then the Padres have a chance to try and fight back into this division and fight their way towards the top. Now, we've already covered the two teams that I believe are ahead of them in this division in the Dodgers and the Giants. So make sure you check out the series playlist down in the show notes below for the state of the franchises in 2022. Now, as we look at the acquisitions that were made by the San Diego Padres this offseason, there's three acquisitions that I really want to discuss. The Yankees would send Luke Voigt, a powerhouse first baseman slash DH type, over to San Diego. This is going to be a player that that absolutely is going to flourish and thrive in San Diego, in my opinion. I think that he's going to be able to go in, play every single day for the Padres, whether it be at first base or as that DH role, and be able to put up a monstrous, monstrous campaign. I have a bold prediction that directly ties to Luke Voigt that I'll give you a little later on in this video. One of the other acquisitions that were made was another first baseman DH type in Matt Beattie from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, in-division trades are a little bit strange sometimes, but to me, this was a surplus that the Dodgers had that they sent away to the Padres. Now, what makes it so interesting to me now is that the Padres have three first basemen on their roster between Beatty, Voigt, and obviously Eric Hosmer, who they paid quite a bit of money to several years ago. Now, the last acquisition that I want to talk about for the San Diego Padres was the acquisition of catcher Jorge Alfaro from the Miami Marlins. I think there's an opportunity here for Alfaro to really stick in San Diego and put up a very good solid season for this team in 2022. I think that he's going to be looked at as an underrated performer in this lineup, but have the ability to really give this team some needed offense at the bottom of their order. Now, as we look at the state of the pitching for this roster, I think that it is actually going to grade out as a B plus. We have some big names like you, Darvish, Dilson Lamette, Mike Clevenger is coming back from injury. So there's guys to be excited about. Obviously, as with every team in Major League Baseball, everything is predicated on health, and they're already dealing with a blow to the offensive lineup that we'll get into in a moment. But when you look at what this pitching staff is going to be able to do, to me, that starting rotation is really where they're going to really put all of their emphasis. They have Blake Snell, who's probably going to be the ace of this staff right behind you, Darvish, as a 1-1A one one type of scenario. I also think that there are some young guys like Mackenzie Gore who could really come up and make a big, big in impact for this San Diego Padres team. The reason why it's not a surefire A-plus level pitching staff is because there are serious questions to me in that bullpen. I think that their starters are really going to give them a lot of length, and I think that they're about six to seven starters deep, which is going to help them in terms of being able to kind of manage the innings that their bullpen has to con take control of. But as we know the way that the game is headed, there's a lot more to the bullpen attack than just rolling out six or seven starters. So for the Padres to be successful for me in 2022, it is going to come down to their starting pitching. If they can have good solid seasons across the board from their starters, this is going to be a very interesting team to watch. As we look at the state of the offense for the San Diego Padres, there's a lot to like about this lineup, even without Fernando Tatis Jr. in it to start with. Now, let's be very, very clear. Without Fernando, I don't think that this lineup truly has what it takes to fight against the powerhouse top of this division in the Los Angeles Dodgers. When you have a guy like Tatis Jr. that is so dynamic and so passionate in the way that he plays, yes, there's going to be a little bit of a reckless abandonment with which he plays. That is also going Going to go into the favor and to the pool of passion and uplifting nature that he plays with. That child 
childlike enthusiasm and love for the game is infectious and that can truly help this team kind of get back to being towards the top level of this division but again the biggest thing that I have to say is with the fact that Fernando is going to be out of action for at least a month or two this is really going to hurt the chances for the San Diego Padres there are definitely powerhouse people in this lineup Luke Voigt to me and I'll get to that bold prediction in just a moment is going to have a monster campaign Manny Machado is always amongst the very best in the game in my opinion and while I do believe that the Padres could use some more help throughout that lineup most notably in the outfield in my opinion I think that there are going to be some opportunities to kind of platoon guys in this outfield for the San Diego Padres I think that overall there is going to be a positive feeling about this lineup overall their offensive grade for me right now is a B for that offense I think that it ticks up a bit more once Fernando gets back now as we look at the state of the franchise overall I think that they're in a good spot I don't know that they necessarily are going to be able to compete against the Dodgers to begin the season I don't know that by the season's end that they'll be there either even with Fernando coming back I think that there's an opportunity for the Padres to start to make some headway towards the top of that division and creep up on the Dodgers and pass the Giants but I don't know that they're going to have enough of that just yet I think this is going to be a B grading for me when it comes to this franchise I think there's an opportunity that they may make some moves to try to free up some space in terms of their payroll to be able to make some other moves come next offseason but now as far as that bold prediction when it comes to Luke Voigt. I think Voigt is going to have a monster season for the San Diego Padres. I think playing out in sunny San Diego is really going to allow Luke Voigt to stay healthy, which is going to be the biggest key for him. I also think that San Diego plays him more at the DH role than in the field at first base. Therefore, I think Luke Voigt will have a 45 plus home run campaign for the San Diego Padres. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know your feelings on this down in the comment section below. What are your thoughts and feelings about the San Diego Padres? Where do they fall? in terms of the National League West rankings. In my opinion, I had them on our predictions, on my predictions list at number three. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know your thoughts on where they land and what are you most excited for or most worried about when it comes to the San Diego Padres in 2022. As always, keep it locked into the entire GLMG family with We Sibs, the Granite Geek Show, and of course here on the Baseball Banter Broadcast. For sticking around all the way to the end here, I want to offer you a promo code on our merchandise shop, baseballbanterbroadcast.com. Use the promo code banter to save five percent off your order keep it locked in all season long as i continue to bring you the latest news notes and my personal thoughts theories and opinions as well as the state of each and every franchise in major league baseball catch you on the next one peace